Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek, welcome back to the channel. Midnight's Edge had a video out the other day. I'll put a link to it below because I might have some of the details wrong or I might not remember everything that they were saying. I had it on uh, autoplay in the background while I was doing some work. But this video was pretty interesting. It talked about how uh, there's been some validation for a, a, a hypothesis a lot of us have had, and that is that the TV companies, the movie production studios or whatever, they know what they're doing when they create garbage material like uh, like Rings of Power or She-Hulk and such. They know what they're doing because it tends to follow a pattern. They turn out poor story, just objectively poorly written story, poorly handled, poor uh, uh, iterations of the mythologies or whatever. You know, obviously not loyal to Tolkien or, or the great you know character of She-Hulk in any way. Uh, definitely the agendas are pushed in there. They're not even remotely hidden, you know, all of that's there. And the, the, the theory is that they do this on purpose because that's what they want to do. You know, they want to push their agenda. But the method behind the, you know, suppose the supposed method behind the madness here is they say, well, if we do that, we can hire writers who are basically unknown. We don't have to spend money on writers or directors or producers. We don't really have to spend much money on that because no matter how the show turns out, or the movie turns out, or the series turns out, or whatever, we can just, if it starts to fail, we can just blame that on uh, the audience's sexist, or the audience's racist, or the audience's any of that stuff, you know? That's what uh, that's what they've been doing, right? And, and um, the Midnight's Edge video talks about how this was something that they learned, you know, back in 2016 Ghostbusters, and even before, you know, Andre Trace is back another one as well. And, uh, and I think there's a lot of truth to that. A lot of truth to that. That is something that they absolutely know what they're doing. They, they don't want to have to pay much money, you know. They want to get those agendas out there anyway. So why not be able to go ahead and do that and just, uh, and just blame its failure, you know, as we're used to now on, oh, that's just because you're racist or sexist or whatever. One of the things, though, that, uh, the Midnight's Edge video doesn't go into much, and this is something that I've been saying a lot, is that that ploy wouldn't work. That ploy would not work. It wouldn't. They wouldn't get to call out things as racist and everything like that if we didn't feed such a frenzied promotional campaign of our own of the criticism, right? And uh, I've, I've been saying this for a while now. I, I'm not saying that you should just be quiet and not mention any of the horrible things that are wrong with Rings of Power or She-Hulk or anything like that. Not at all. Uh, these are garbage shows, and they're they're trying to uh, really desecrate our wonderful mythologies, our, our, our um, stories and whatnot, so they need to be spoken out against. But we're seeing just far more than just speaking out against this stuff. We're seeing a whole, a whole movement, a whole industry almost being, being built on this sort of outrage. I can't believe they did this. Here's another small development. You know, something else, somebody else said something today, but I'm going to bill it as though it's a totally new thing. And then I'm going to, you know, do my video and I'm going to start my video. I'm going to pad it with a bunch of history of the whole thing. And from the very beginning, Rings of Power has been a blight on the blood. And fans have known blah, 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 blah. It's what I call throat clearing if I get that kind of nonsense in a student paper. And then they get to that little, the little tiny rumor that they, they, their thumbnail and title build as a fact, you know, uh, Taika Watiti is canned by Marvel. It was a rumor at the time, and, and that's what they, they'll do the whole video about, you know, and they'll be, you know, showing you the tweets, you know, and stuff like that. It's like outrage news. It really is the same kind of thing. Uh, you know, here's our footage. You know, here's somebody who's a very angry commentator. And again, I'm not, I'm not at all taking issue with the sentiment. I share that sentiment. It's horrible what they're doing. And I'm not saying that everybody who makes videos about this is necessarily you know, trying to, to be a, a predator on the YouTube algorithm or something like that, or just, you know, being insincere and looking for the, the ad revenue or something. I'm not necessarily saying that, but I'm saying that it's done to the point and it's whipped people up into such a frenzy to the point where, yeah, a lot of people are doing that. And it's actually counterintuitive. It actually, it actually just hurts our cause, right? Because if our cause is to call out the crap there and to make them have to change it to, to create some, some change in the future, if they see that we're going to constantly give it so much attention and, and all the hate watching guys, that's just part of it. And, and um, you know, people, I don't, I don't watch that stuff. Well, yeah, great. You know, I hope that, hope that a lot of you don't watch it or give it any attention, but it's, it's just obvious that a lot of people are. And you look at their, their arguments. Well, 
well, I've got to watch it so I know what to say was bad. No, you don't. You're giving it a click. You're giving it a view. You're giving it. And then people say, well, they're going to, they're going to play with the numbers anyway. So it doesn't matter if I don't watch it. If you even need to make that argument, that means that you're really overly invested in having to watch this thing. If you even want to make an argument like that saying, so, so it's okay if I watch it, you know, there's something wrong there. It's this sort of, um, I don't know what to call it. It's the same kind of mentality where people enjoyed watching. I think freak shows back in the day are even sort of the trashy daytime talk shows, you know, the Jerry Springers and stuff like that. I think it's that, it's that dopamine hit. Let me watch, you know, some people, let me watch a train wreck. Oh, it's going to be so much fun to watch this train wreck. And then there's going to be some drama. And then, like I've said before, you know, then let me go back and check and what so-and-so with these commentators. Yeah, yeah, it was stupid, wasn't it? And how much time do you spend pouring that into your soul? Whether it's, whether you're getting it, whether you're following all the plot points and all of the, the, the development by development from your favorite YouTubers or whether you're watching it yourself, you're still pouring all of that into you. And that is basically helping it to win. You are what you watch. Just as much as you are what you eat, you are what you watch. Stories affect you. The, you are the product. Your beliefs, your perceptions of the world, of yourself, of reality, and all of that is the product of the stories you tell yourself about those things, psychologically. And as I've said before, the, the fictional stories that we choose to spend time with for entertainment purposes, you, you, you can't even remotely say that those stories, since we're so dependent and so built on story anyway, our psyches, you can't say that fictional stories you might spend time with, knowing that they're fiction still, the nature of those stories isn't going to influence the nature of the stories you tell yourself about different things in the world and perception. You can't, you can't even make that argument. That's, that's silly. And so, but you know, you hear that all the time. People who are just desperate to still watch this stuff. It's all entertainment. Watch what you like. Just have fun with it. Would you say the same thing about eating? Would you say, Hey, go into the hostess aisle. Just eat what you like. Just have fun with it. There's no reason for have to put uh, limits on things. There's no reason. But you hear that nonsense argument all the time about uh, about story and entertainment. It's just entertainment, you know. It's just that. No, it does affect you. And there's, you know, just like with junk food, there's a there's a limit. There's an area where you can maybe, you know, if you want to do that uh, with 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 bad stories. I don't know anybody would there. But it's uh, it's frustrating to me because I'm seeing there's there's a cycle. It's kind of cyclical, and and I'm usually caught in the middle of this. Right now, I'm one of the ones being told by a lot of people, you need to be streaming more. You need to be putting your two cents in about the She-Hulk and about the, the Rings of Power. And you need to really be out there and, and uh, you know, joining the fray, joining the fight, you know. And, and I get, you know, uh, criticized for not doing it. But I think we've got to the tipping point where that's just, that's just hurting it. That's just not, that's not actually achieving the effect we want anymore. It's playing into their hands. Uh, because they can just call all of it right, racist, sexist, whatever. But it's also um, it's also getting people hooked on the on the uh, the train wreck nature of it all. That's that's one type of the wheel. Now the wheel's about to turn again. Every time a uh, you know a, a Mandalorian or the Joker film or something like that comes out, then you look at all of these channels who are you know right now the bandwagon is to talk about this and be critical. You know suddenly the wheel will turn a little bit and then they're all for they're supporting it guys you need to go consume this you know because you need you know this is this is how we'll win you know this is how we'll we'll, we'll tell them what we need and and then i'm told oh professor you're so negative you're just you get you, you can't be critical about everything man you can't you i'm the one that's staying the same but this cycle keeps going around and everybody just keeps you know reacting whatever the flavor of the month is reacting against me you know for that or whatever i've been staying the same on this you, you, you don't, you don't, you're not happy with the little bone they throw. That's what they want you to do, right? Be happy with this little bone we throw you. Go ahead and be outraged because we're going to do what we want next. Be outraged about that, but be outraged a lot so we can call it what we want and we can spin it the way we want it and everything's fine. We get the views anyway. We don't care. Uh, and then be happy about the next little bone we throw you. That's going to happen. I'm guessing, I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing with the Flash movie. And you might say, how can you say that with the Ezra Miller nonsense? Yeah, the Ezra Miller nonsense, but you're going to watch that movie will come out because it's got that link to Zack Snyder's garbage take on the whole universe. And because, you know, God bless him, Michael Keaton, for some reason, said he'd be a part of that. You're going to have people going to see that. I'm already hearing some people say, you know, actually, it's supposed to be pretty good. And then suddenly you hear a new story. Uh, you know, Ezra Miller, I don't support anything he did, but, you know, I'm just looking at the art as opposed to the artist. And, you know, he's not even really a big part of that movie. What's really great about that movie is how they do this, they do this. This is what we heard about Spider-Man No Way Home. 
uh, we, you know, I, yeah, yeah, Tobey Maguire is so great, you know, or, or Andrew Garfield, whatever. It, it's the cycle. They're, 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 you're playing into their hand. They're leading you into this by the nose. Okay, now it's the time. Okay, be outraged. Yeah, do your little outrage thing there on YouTube, guys. All right. Yeah, that's cute. All right, good. You got us the numbers there. Okay, now here's, here's a little bone. Be happy about that. All right, yeah, yeah. Dance, dance. Good, good. Okay, now here comes an outrage again. You're not fighting anything. <laughs> you're not you're not telling them like it is. And it bothers me where some of these YouTube uh, channels, and again, I'm not talking about every YouTube channel that, that talks about this issue, but I see a lot of them really are just insincere. And they try to come across as, you know, I'm with you. We're fighting the good fight to get by watching my channel, by clicking that like and subscribe button. We're going to fight this fight. You know, it's like, and again, I'm not talking about every YouTuber. I don't attack other YouTubers at all. I've never called out a specific YouTuber about anything, and I'm not about to. But I see the trend, and I'm speaking to the trend. And uh, so if you're thinking, oh, you're clearly talking about so-and-so, you don't know that. Uh, there are some YouTubers out there that I know, and a lot of these guys, I've, um, that one of the reasons why I don't call out anybody on YouTube is because a lot of people have just treated me wonderfully. I've got nothing personally against them whatsoever. I might have something against a trend that they may or may not be partaking in, but uh, but I would never, you know, go out there and call it again. So I say that, you know, there's no drama here. I don't go on the channel and be like, yeah, 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 you're talking about so-and-so. I hate them, too. You don't know I'm talking about anybody. <laughs> but you do know the trend, and you can make your own conclusions about that. And uh, and, and, and I just wanted to make a video that, that has it said, that calls out this this cycle. Just like Midnight's Edge called out, you know, the the the, the pattern. And, and there was, you'd have to watch the video. There was somebody posting about it, somebody in the industry maybe that kind of lended, lended some sort of validation to this kind of thing. But this was the, uh, this was the, it was validating the pattern that's happening here for whatever it is. So you, you can watch that video there. But I do see the, the, the cycle. I see the cycle. And if, if, uh, if these little bones that they were throwing you were really any way to get the new stuff to, you know, better and, and to improve, then why does the outrage keep coming back? It's not. It's all part of their plan. It's all part of their plan. So wanted to have that said, uh, of course, She-Hulk is nonsense. Of course, Rings of Power is nonsense. And anybody who who thinks they've got artistic merit to any degree. Yeah, you've got poor taste. Yeah, I'm flat out telling you that you have very poor taste in, in, in art and you need to spend some time cultivating that taste because just like uh, consuming a bunch of junk food, it's going to be bad for you in the future. Have you how dare you say somebody's got bad taste? So what? Get your panties out of a bunch. I'm one single YouTuber in the world that said something you didn't like. You'll be okay. Uh, but but we do need to start holding people accountable. We need to stop just kind of falling into this, well, whatever anybody likes, you know, it's just how people can just enjoy different things. Of course they can. No one's going to go hold a gun to their head and say they can't watch this or do that. Of course you're not. But but stop giving people a pass when it comes to your support or your, um, you know, just, uh, just sort of backing down and not speaking up about it, you know, because th these, these, these things are detrimental to our mythologies and they're detrimental to our psychologies and to our society. Ultimately, that's the whole, that's the whole point of my channel, you know, the whole basis. But anyway, I feel like I'm just going to kind of go on and on and on and repeat myself at this point. So I'll stop, but, uh, I will be back for more. Uh, I did have a great, uh, great birthday a couple weeks ago and it, and it went to a historical thing sound engraver and i did and i've got uh, some video content so i want to put out another little historical uh historical fact versus mythological or myth you know the fact versus the myth or whatever video that i did like the one for jamestown some some days ago so i'll do another one of that one and uh and have that out soon but until next time keep enjoying and digging deeper into the true blue hero stories you love thanks for watching